Hey pals, it's John here with the Lens Power, and we're going to go through what you get with the DJI RS4 Pro combo, why you would pick this combo or this gimbal, and how to go about setting it up. So let's dive straight in. If you rent one of these from us, this is pretty much what it's going to look like when you open it up. We've got a cheat sheet here which details all the various items that are included. We have various bags, hopefully labeled with the contents. So we can see we've got four USB cables of various types in here, the lens support system. We've got HDMI cables. We've got rail system, which we'll come back to later. We've got focus motor. We've got an Allen wrench, which will maybe come in handy. Obviously, the gimbal itself, the little tripod feet. This is the battery grip. A phone holder, a couple of plates, we've got briefcase handle, we have the Raven Eye or wireless video transmission system. So we're not going to use all of these right now, but this is what is going to come with the kit. Everything is listed on this cheat sheet. Um, so yeah, if you're ever in doubt, if you're like, did I pack everything, find the cheat sheet, go through it. If you've got everything that's on the cheat sheet, you'll be good back into there. I'm just going to leave myself with the essentials for now. We'll come back to some of the other bits in, in a moment. And I like to start off, we're going to attach this into here. It's going to give us a nice base to work with. And we're going to pop this onto here. Lock me locking mechanism on this one is something we've seen for a couple of generations now, but it, it's this, it's a two-stage, twist it to here and press there, but down we go and twist. Next step is to figure out which side is up. This is up. The easiest way to tell is that this auto lock should be facing up. You should be able to read it on this arm. So I mentioned earlier that we have two plates. One is a large plate, this is going to be for cameras that have a 3.8 system, the heavier cameras. And it's going to be the primary one that we're going to use today because we're going to be working with the Canon C70. But if you have a smaller camera, such as this FX30, then you would use this. This is probably the default plate that most people are going to use. It's a little upgraded over last years um, in that we now have this system here that is designed to help stop rotation of the camera when it's attached onto the plate. The idea being that you pull this back so that it snugs up against the camera body and uh, stops it from twisting. So I'm just going to set these over here because like you said we're going to be working with this. This is the Canon C17. We've got the RF 50mm 1.2 mounted on it right here. So I've taken the lens cap off. We've got the lens on it, we've got a battery in it. Basically, if you've never balanced a gimbal before, this is the part of the video that's for you really is. You really want to make sure that you've got everything attached to your camera that you are going to have attached on in the end before you start balancing it. Because if you balance it and then you add something or you remove something, it is going to throw off your balance entirely. I'm going to take this, I'm just going to mount it onto here, right about there, take my little screwdriver, make sure that's nice and tight, just like that. So now that we've got the gimbal mounted onto the plate, we're just going to slide it back into this, and I reckon about there, I'm going to unlock this right here. And I was a little bit off, we can, if you see how that's in the lock position. As I unlock this, the camera is going to tilt backwards because I wasn't quite right. That means that we're not balanced. So I'm just going to use this here that I mentioned. That is uh, the fine tuning here to get things where we want it. So right about there. That's going to be a good starting point. We might have to adjust that later. I'm going to lock this here. Now we're going to spin it upwards. And we're going to fine tune this right here to make sure that this is balanced correctly this way. When we're balancing a gimbal, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to locate the center of gravity 
for the rig that we're balancing. That's too far that way. Maybe right about there. So far, we're doing good, though. We've got this, and we've got our front to back balance. So we're doing good. Next up, I'm going to unlock this one right here. And that is going to release this arm to freely move. And if I let this go, we can see that we're turning this way, which means I need to move my weight in the opposite direction. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to move, I'm going to unlock that, and I've gone too far that way. I'm going to come back. That's right about there. So if I lock that so it doesn't accidentally slip out of place, and I put it on a little odd angle, but it's coming back to the middle. It's not rocking back to over here or the other way. There we go, looking pretty good so far. The last axis is this one right here. I'm gonna unlock that. I'm gonna set this all back down again. And then to adjust this axis, we, we're gonna slide this backwards and forwards as needed. Put that back to there. When I tilt it, it should stay in place, but it's not. It's tilting, it's rotating counterclockwise, which means I need to bring it towards the back a little bit. I'm going to try that. I'm getting pretty close. That might be too much. Right there, actually. Not too much at all. Just the right amount. Now with that set, I'm going to flip this into the locked position so that this can't move anymore. So there you have it. That's the balancing. So we're going to power it up. This is going to unlock the various axes, and then we're going to be able to change the mode, which isn't what I was hoping for. But we'll hit the calibration, and we'll let it do its thing. And just take a moment, it goes through this coffee grinding process, and there we go. We now have a perfectly balanced gimbal. I mentioned earlier that if you adjust your rig after you have everything balanced, it's going to throw things off. And it could be something as simple as putting a lens cap on the front. But now we'll see that just having the lens cap on there is enough to throw off my balance. Okay, if I take this off, we're good. Pop it back on. Not good. Okay, so as a reminder, you want to make sure that you have your setup exactly as you want it before you start to balance because little bits and pieces like a lens hood, like uh, forgetting to put the battery in, um, is enough to completely undo all of your hard work. Now we're going to take a moment to talk over some of the accessories that come with this system. First up, we have the rail system. If you are using the long plate, we have this. It's a traditional, just it's going to mount onto a couple of the screws there, and it's going to give you the ability to mount this rail. If, however, you're using the standard plate, the short plate, we have a new system in place. We're going to swap this out, and we're going to bring this one in. And it's just going to sit there like that. Uh, we can lock it there. And then this now gives us the ability to mount that there. It's actually a really nice, elegant solution. Now, why would you need to use this? Well, maybe you want to use the focus motor. Um, it's new for this 2024 year model. Uh, yeah, if you like me sounding like a car dealer. As you can see, we can actually control focus, iris, and zoom on this. You can dive into the settings through the app, uh, through the gimbal itself, and you can pick out which one it is, and it gives you a little bit more definition. Um, you can also like use the switch to move through them. But this will fit nicely onto here, and then a simple twist of this will keep it locked in place. It's held in there nice and snugly. 
if you're using a lens that doesn't have geared focus, geared iris, whatever it might be, then uh, this is included as well. This is going to mate nicely with the teeth on here because that's what it's designed to do. And then, yeah, you've got a nice little focus system. You'll notice probably the couple of USB ports on here. These will hook up to the various ports on the gimbal, and then that's what allows you to control the focus either through the system, the wheel on the front there, or using the optional extra, which is the LiDAR system as well. That's the majority of the accessories. The last one would be the briefcase handle. Last one worth mentioning, if you ask me, is the briefcase handle. This just gives you another way that you can hold the gimbal. Bearing in mind that the gimbal is not turned on. But yeah. That's it. It has a 9.9 .9 pound payload. Uh, it can mount pretty large cameras. Um, everything up to like a Blackmagic 6K. Uh, in terms of width, you can do an FX6 on here, depending on the lens you're putting on it. Uh, obviously, C70 and smaller cameras, FX30s, and your traditional DSLR-sized setups. Yeah, it's um, nice little quality of life improvements with things like the new focus motor, the new mounting system for the rod, the rail. That's about it. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful or informative, if you just like to hear me sound like a car dealership by saying things like year model, um, then consider giving us a like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, smash a bell, and until next time, we'll see you soon.